course. Um, so this is the uh, last lecture. It's we've, something that we started in the faculty a few years back uh, to acknowledge a, a tremendous career within the faculty and great contributions to uh, the region and the area that they uh, study in. And today, of course, it's uh, Dr. Tom Hinch and Dr. Gordon, Dr. Gordon Walker who will be giving their uh, last lecture uh, to us today and then after that we'll have the opportunity to break out and renew uh, old acquaintances and share some uh, stories uh, through the day. So the first one uh, will be uh, Tom and I do a very short intro uh, here to Tom um, and then I will hand it over to James Hyam and James is from the University of Otago in uh, New Zealand, we've got a video that will do be the introduction, the formal introduction for Tom. And the story goes that uh, uh, Tom met James when he was on sabbatical there in, in 1998, I believe. Right, Tom. So Tom uh, graduated from uh, Brandon University in 1978. And Tom, I graduated from Brandon University in 1978. That's that's odd. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tom was a, a bobcat. Uh, uh, Tom I was a bobcat. I was a b basketball player. And we didn't actually know each other. Uh, uh, Tom finished his degree and he came to U of A in 1991. And I, I don't remember meeting Tom in 1991. The first time I actually ever remember meeting Tom was when he came to Australia in 1998. Well, he was on sabbatical in New Zealand and came and visited our family in Australia. I knew who he was, but that's my first memory of meeting Tom was in Australia in 1998 and his wife and his, and his two very young kids who are now the same age as my kids. So it's been a long time. When I first came back to uh, U of A, Tom was the Associate Dean uh, here of uh, uh, Community and International Engagement and uh, really was uh, you know, very supportive of everything and very helpful for me. Uh, as I uh, took over as dean. So it's been a very, very great pleasure to work with Tom and find out that we had so much in common during our undergraduate days at the university, about the size of a small high school, but, you know, basketball <laughs> players and hockey players, we didn't really talk to each other. So I'll flip it over now to James to do the introduction, and then we'll ask Tom to come up. Kia ora, everyone at the University of Alberta. My name is James Hyam, and rumour has it that Professor Tom Hinch is retiring I find this uh, inconceivable and totally unacceptable. Um, but if it has to be that way, uh, so be it. I have been granted the great privilege of speaking just for three or four minutes uh, by way of uh, a farewell celebration of Tom's career. And uh, I understand that this video will be shown on the occasion of his farewell lecture. I wish so much that I could be there to, uh, to attend the lecture. Uh, but also to be part of the celebrations of Tom's career and to wish him face to face all the very best for what I hope will be a very long and happy and uh, fulfilling retirement. Uh, I should start by saying that I met Tom Hinch for the first time in December 1997. Uh, I had uh, finished my PhD the previous year. I was a young academic. I was very eager to branch out and extend my networks and extend my research career and extend my research collaborations. We hosted a conference in Cromwell, Central Otago, New Zealand. Uh, I co-convened that conference and Tom was one of uh, a few international delegates that attended uh, and it dovetailed with a period of sabbatical leave in 1998. The year that my first child was born, daughter Alexandra, in July of 1998, Tom and Lorraine and their two daughters, Lindsay and Gillian, spent uh, time with us at the University of Otago, which you can see behind me, the, uh, the clock tower of the University of Otago. This is the weather we have uh, quite routinely here in Dunedin, as Tom will attest. Uh, beautiful day here in Dunedin, quite worthy of this auspicious occasion. So uh, Tom and I spent uh, some very special time together in 1998. We didn't write much in that year, uh, we wrote a little bit together, but that year was special because we spent the year talking and discussing uh, and building the platform of a collaboration that has continued to the point of his retirement. And, uh, and I hope very quietly uh, that it will continue beyond his point of retirement because uh, I'm totally reliant on Tom 
uh, our collaborative brilliance is built, built on his individual brilliance and I will be lost without him. Um, however, he knows that, he knows that, uh, that I'm going to be suffering uh, with, uh, with uh, the start of his retirement. However, so here's some memorabilia, some uh, personal uh, props that uh, help to remind me of some very special times spent with Tom, um, but also with the wider Hinge family. And I, I certainly want to acknowledge Lorraine uh, as such a, a close personal friend. Tom and Lorraine have looked after us so brilliantly on, on visits to Edmonton. Of course, I will remember so fondly my collaborations with Tom. Um, I, I remember when I was promoted to, to professor here at the University of Otago, I got in touch with Tom and said, in all honesty, and with a straight face for once in my life, with a very straight face, that I would never have achieved that promotion at that time had it not been for the work that uh, we had collaborated on and uh, the, the way in which Tom's uh, senior mentorship and friendship and collaboration had accelerated my career. Um, Tom, your career has been brilliant. Um, I wish it could continue uh, beyond, uh, beyond this, uh, this time. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure and an absolute privilege to collaborate with you. Um, I've uh, spoken widely uh, about uh, our collaborative relationship uh, and I try to model my mentoring of junior colleagues upon your mentoring and support and collaboration with me. It's been very, very inspirational. Um, of course, I wish you and Lorraine all the very best for your retirements. And, uh, and I'm absolutely certain that uh, the story does not stop here, um, that we will continue to remain very close friends and uh, we will continue to have our paths cross regularly, I hope. Um, I'm already hatching plans to get you out to New Zealand to spend some time here again. Uh, but for today, I want to pass on the congratulations uh, from me and my colleagues in the Department of Tourism here at the University of Otago uh, upon your career. It's been fantastic to be a part of it. Um, it really has been a complete privilege. Um, I also should mention Gordon because Gordon, uh, I know, is also speaking at this event today. Uh, again, I wish I could be there to listen to your talk, Gordon, and it's been great to collaborate with you alongside Tom on projects uh, on previous visits to Edmonton. So I wish you both all the very best for your retirements. Congratulations on your careers and all the very best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is kind of weird. Uh, it's not often you do a last lecture. Uh, and it, uh, I, I think this is probably the first time that uh, I've lectured in front of my daughter. So that's, uh, that's I've, I've lectured to them. <laughs> So, so it is a bit strange, so just bear with me as I sort of gather my thoughts. Um, so thanks for your introduction, Kerry. Uh, as he said, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say that I've really enjoyed working with all the deans that I worked with over the course of my career. They've uh, been very supportive, and uh, I, I think they make a big difference. Uh, they have to make difficult decisions and so on, but they, they do help foster our individual careers, so certainly appreciate that. Um, as Kerry said, we share uh, a degree from Brandon University. We were both kind of marginal athletes uh, <laughs> you know, on basketball. I'm and less than that. <laughs> <laughs> so we share this really strong, unique bond that marginal athletes have. At those <laughs> so that's really nice to have uh, had a chance to, to work with, with Kerry. So thanks for your introduction. Um, James, uh, you know, I, I, obviously I fooled him. He, you know, he thinks that uh, I was doing most of the work. He was uh, a fantastic guy to work with. And for those of you who are academics, I hope you get a chance to connect with someone that, that liked the, the way I connected with, with James. So kind of a yin and a yang thing. He had lots of energy, lots really bright guy to write fast. And I'd come in and grind away and so on. And, but, you know, things really worked in, in terms of the, the writing that, that we did together. Um, but beyond sort of the, the academic side of it, the, the research side, which came as uh, absolutely critically important from a professional standpoint, uh, the friendship. And, uh, you know, that's the thing I'm going to remember most, uh, working with James, but uh, with, with other colleagues as well. And just one anecdote uh, from working with James. Uh, so we did go back and forth. I was there in 1998 uh, for the full year with uh, family. And, uh, 
he came back for a visit. And so it uh, went back and forth a, a few times. And one of the times he was coming for a visit, he sent me a, an email and said, well, is there anything you want from New Zealand? I said, yeah, I'd, I'd like some spades. Spades being the local beer. So he said, no problem, he'll, he'll bring me some, some spades. So uh, true to his word, he uh, got off the plane and we got home and sun was shining, got out in the deck and he pulled out a five pack of spades. <laughs> James, what do you mean five pack? Well, the five pack started off as a six pack, <laughs> but uh, it's a long way from Dunedin to Auckland <laughs> to LA. And I think in LA they had a big long stop, stop over. <laughs> um, exchange rate was really lousy, so uh, it didn't make sense. So I think back to beer. Yeah. Anyway, so the five pack of beer was really good. I, I, I enjoyed that. All right, so there's uh, three things that I'd like to, to do with my time here. And uh, one just a, one anecdote about uh, sort of how I ended up in this uh, field for the direction that I took. Um, then I want to talk about uh, being an academic in, in general, what, what I liked about that, and then some thank yous. So I'm a bit of a planner. Uh, I've, uh, you know, I've thought my way through, through things. I, I'm great at writing up schedules and and they're adjusting those schedules multiple times to stay on track. Um, but sometimes there's a little bit of serendipity that uh, creeps into the things. And one was a meeting with James, and because I didn't know James before we went on that sabbatical, it's just an opportunity that really worked out well. But this, this other one, so 79, um, graduated, uh, got married. Uh, in 80, well, we were out in, uh, Edmonton, and here's the plan. I'm going to become a medical doctor, just like my dad. So I, I've done an undergraduate degree in, in Bachelor of Arts, a big switch to go into the science side and so on, but that was the plan. And uh, I headed off to register. And 1980, some of you were around then, a total gong show. The, the registration, you had to go to each department and faculty on campus, and they would have a blackboard, I don't think whiteboards were invented yet, uh, where they would list courses and then they'd stroke them off as they filled up so that you'd be in line up and all of a sudden you'd see a stroke go through a course and you'd have to scramble to figure out another course that actually, so a real gong show. And as I was going around signing up for all these courses, I was getting a little less comfortable with each kind of step, thinking this is not really what I want to do. Anyway, at, at, at one point in the process, I think really at the tail end of it, you had to come back to the main gym. And that's where they had the cashier and everybody set up and you had to pay your money on it. Sorry, done deal. I saw a sign. The sign said, Department of Recreation Administration. And uh, so I went down that hallway to, to the department. I said, well, do you have any information on, on your, your programs? And they did. And, and then uh, Leslie Bella, who some of you, you know, uh, was a, a fat member here. She was, uh, she took the time to meet with this kind of confused guy <laughs> out, out in the hallway and just talk about my background, talk about uh, the, the record in program and just uh, how there might be a fit. So two or three minutes later, I really switched, switched around what my plans were and I was registering for basically a qualifying year to get into the master's program in recreation administration. So again, a little bit of serendipity, um, but also just the, the fact that uh, someone took some time to, to chat to me. So I've tried to, I guess, do similar things uh, with the students that, that I've taught along the way. So that was uh, getting into it. Uh, in terms of my, my actual career, so I want to talk about uh, the research, so I, I start off doing research up in the north, looking at tourism in the north. That kind of naturally evolved into looking at tourism and indigenous peoples. Um, and then I did this trip to New Zealand and did some tourism with uh, Maori people there, some research related to that. But I uh, met James and, and got excited about this, this sport-based tourism. So that's where I spent the majority of my, my career. The research side of our responsibilities um, something that I've really enjoyed. And I, I think the, the essence of it is this sense of discovery. And uh, I would liken it, again, I know there's a lot of academics here, and so you, you get that. 
but uh, reading a good book, you know, late at night and just wanting to turn that page, read, read, read one more page. So there's some of that in, uh, in research for me. And uh, of course, sometimes the, not all books are good, so I mean, it's not all. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's, uh, I guess the other one, the analogy would be, is travel. So, you know, you're on your bike and, and it's just going around that next banner going up over the, the crest of the next hill just to see what that, what's, what's beyond there. So it's, it's kind of a parallel thing and it fit nicely with my interest in, in terms of travel and research. So that was, that's kind of the research side. Administration side, so 10 years on the dark side. <laughs> and uh, I, I did some work as uh, Associate Dean undergrad and then uh, Associate Dean International Community and that fit in with my research interests. Um, I, the, my prime motivation for, for getting involved in that was I, I've seen worked with other administrators, managers, and uh, I think you know the idea of creating an environment where people can be the best academic they can be, or, or students can be successful at an undergraduate or, or graduate level. So, as a, a administrator, you get a chance to create those environments, so those situations. That was a, my kind of primary motivation. Um, secondary, more selfishly, it's a, a chance to actually have a say in those decisions. I didn't always agree with other decisions that have been made by other administrators and so on. So, you know, don't just sit in the silence and complain, get in there and, and try to make uh, some influence things yourself and, and realize pretty quick that, ooh, this isn't quite so easy as I thought it might be. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the third reason was that there's a really good office. I had a great office as a, an associate dean for, for quite a while. We were looking out onto some trees and stuff. And anyway. <laughs> <laughs> teaching. Um, teaching is why I got into academia. I, I enjoyed being a student and I had a lot of respect for the, the teachers that I had uh, throughout, uh, throughout my, my learning. Uh, so to become a teacher was is kind of a, a natural. In fact, this is off my script, I gotta watch myself, but uh, <laughs> I was uh, asked to be a tutor for a, an international student when I was in my undergraduate economics degree. And that did influence me in terms of realizing that I enjoyed teaching. And, and so it was an opportunity that uh, did influence me down the, down the road. Uh, one thing about teaching though is that I think there's, we create a false dichotomy between learning and teaching. And, and uh, well, bottom line is that uh, I think that the two really intermingle. And when I have, I've got some undergrad students uh, at the doctor class, it's great to see them. Um, but when I have, uh, a class that I think has gone well. When I'm trying to decide another class, I mean, I, I heard the darn student evaluations don't always agree with them. Or, <laughs> but it's, uh, if I've had a class where, where I've learned, and it's not just a, a graduate class, but it's an undergraduate class, that they're asking questions that get me thinking, that sort of stop me or make me say, oh, what you say? You know, I, hadn't, I didn't think of it that way before. And, uh, and again, it could be just in the questions and not, not that someone's come up made a profound statement or whatever, but that's the kind of thing that uh, I really enjoy about uh, teaching and, and learning. So uh, the research, the administration, the teaching, but these are just uh, a few of the other highlights that uh, for me, uh, I love the diversity at a university. And you can argue, I mean, there's obviously been uh, gender issues and stuff over the, the years here, but fundamentally people think Differently, like even within our fact that we got all sorts of people that, you know, have this kind of idea or that kind of idea and so on, and it's it's uh, invigorating to, to be in a, a an atmosphere where where you have that, that range of thought, where you don't just have to think one way, but there's lots of different ways, and and you got to duke it out sometimes to figure out what the the right uh, solution or direction is to go, but it's that that diversity, and not just in terms of knowledge and so on, but also in terms of values. Uh, so you get people that understand the world differently than you do, and it, you know, you have to, to work with that. You, you can't just continue on with on a single track. Um, academic freedom, I think that is fundamental to, to universities. I, I think uh, 
as an individual scholar to be able to, you know, basically get up in the morning and be able to think, think about things that uh, not the way someone else wants me to think about things, but the way I'm thinking that particular day. And you've got to do that in the context of your research program and, and the rest of it, and you've got to convince funders and all, all those kind of things. But fundamentally, if if universities were to lose that, I think it would. Uh, I don't think we'd be able to call ourselves universities. I like the academic cycle. I like panicking. Well, I don't like panicking, but uh, <laughs> you know, at the beginning of the term, I'm always all tense and got to get that course outlined and still this to get together and the schedule and so on. Um, and then you're, you know, going day to day to day, just uh, working on your, your lectures and so on. But then it wraps up. You know, you, you mark your papers, you, you do your labs, you do, uh, and, and then you write your exams, and you know, you get closure. On, on things and so academics now are looking at the some are saying okay now I can get into more of my research or you know everybody's got their different patterns and so on but I love that, that kind of cycle and I'll, I'll miss that um, I love sabbaticals <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I love travel I love travel so when I go to a conference I'm strategic I look at you know, not only, you know, does my research fit there and so on, but where's the conference? <laughs> We've got, Alberta Records and Parks Association has their conferences out in uh, Lake Louise and uh, Jasper. What a great idea. <laughs> and those <they, laughs> conferences are packed. Um, so, uh, but the sabbatical, the one that G James referred to up there, that was the best thing for me professionally because I met other people, and it, it helps to put this stuff in context about your, your own faculty and programs. Um, but we ended up with this research collaboration that was really, really productive. So it was, it was, uh, it was great, but also it was great from the perspective of our family. So we got out of the rut and the routines that uh, we were in here that, that just naturally build up as you, you go day to day uh, in, into a situation where basically I worked my work day and then the evenings I had free and my weekends are free and, and we puttered around and we did all sorts of things. So it was really great for our family. I like the fact that we've had an integrated faculty and uh, the fact that we've got the, the, the scholars, the, the academic stream, we've got uh, operations, we've got uh, recreation, the practice of recreation, we've got uh, athletics, and I know things change, and, you know, and uh, there may be a rationale for, for looking at other models and so on, but personally, I like that. I liked that mix of people, and I, mean, I suppose that goes back to the diversity that uh, a university has, but our faculty certainly had, and I enjoyed it, and enjoyed the opportunities of going to, to see some of the best sport, certainly in the city, uh, of my swims. I, I, I'm a speed swimmer. <laughs> I go for 20 minute swim, at the longest, uh, in, in the pool on a regular basis at night. My the so pool's are right here. So all those kind of things are, are great. It was a, a bonus to being in an integrative faculty. The last thing I, my, I had on my list here, not the last thing, but to, that I actually put down was Factory retreats, and that was an error, so we'll just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right, thank yous. All right, I, I'm not going to get into names because I know as soon as I start getting into names, I'll be forgetting some names and that'll be terrible. So uh, I'm going to talk about groups of uh, people that I like to thank <coughs> teachers and mentors, and, and at all levels. and. Really, I mean all levels. So I would go right back, well, to grade school and, and, and junior high and, and high school, undergrad. All the, like I know you work really closely with advisors at a, a master's and a, a PhD level, but there's people that uh, really had a strong impact on me right throughout uh, my formal education and obviously beyond the formal education as well. So I really. Uh, appreciated uh, the, the input that they've had, so I, I thank them. I do thank uh, my 
academic uh, supervisors, and I said I wasn't going to use any names, so I just want to thank all those guys <laughs> out there who were uh, supervisors uh, for me, guys in a very generic sense, um, but made a big difference uh, in terms of knowledge, but in terms of values, and we can, that's another area we could talk about a lot, but values are, I think, part of, um, part of our careers as academics. I'd like to thank second group uh, colleagues. So, uh, you know, some people, uh, Mr. Nielsen might claim that my career has been built on the backs of other uh, colleagues <laughs> with the coat tails or whatever, but that's true. I've done a lot of collaborative work. Uh, and I'd like to think I, I've uh, contributed to, to those collaborations, uh, but I've certainly been enriched by them. And so there's people I work directly with, but there's people at the, at the council and so on that uh, really have uh, shaped me. But I would like to sort of single out um, support staff. And I, I think that as a, an academic, there's just no way um, that our, our faculty could operate without support staff. And the, the, the types of things that, that you do to make it possible for us to, to teach and to, to research. So that's appreciated. Um, and in, uh, personally, I've been bailed out a number of times by, uh, <laughs> by the people that I've been working with, so thanks for that. Students, um, so obviously graduate students, because it helps help me to shape my, my research interests and productivity, but also the, the undergraduate students, uh, and that's not saying there's not challenges. Uh, there's classes that you know, I was butting heads with and so on, but Fundamentally, um, the students were the, kind of both the motivation for me to have my career, but also the reward. So to, to see students uh, be successful uh, with their degrees and, and with their <coughs> careers and with their personal lives uh, is, uh, was quite rewarding. Professional field of practice, uh, another group that, that I would like to single out. Uh, Alberta Recreation Parks Association in particular. Uh, I, I think uh, our faculty is in a good position with the connections that we have out in the field of practice. And uh, I've always been well served uh, by them. So again, I'm one of these guys, pick up the phone or get on my email and say, please, would, are you interested in coming in to chat to meet with my students? And you know, 90% of the cases, people say, yeah, I'd love to come in. Just, just, find a date that uh, works for that. So that makes a big uh, difference. One of the other strengths, I think, of the uh, uh, National Arts and Recreation Sport and Tourism is our uh, practicum program. And so again, the field of practice has been so good at uh, helping us with this practicum program, connecting the academic side to the field of practice. And then finally, I I'd like to uh, thank uh, friends uh, and family, and I'll mention the friends first. You know, just the, the good times that we've had with friends uh, beyond the walls of, of the university, but uh, being able to laugh uh, is a pretty healthy thing, Billy. I, I think. <laughs> uh, it is a healthy thing, and uh, it uh, certainly helps you to keep perspective in terms of some of the challenges you can have at work and so on. Um, and family. I was hoping I'd have something real profound to, to say here, and I didn't really come. Um, it's not unusual, but, uh, but uh, Lorraine, I mean, thank you for, I mean, that's a point I missed earlier on when I was telling you that big story about uh, coming down here to register to be a doctor. That took some explaining when I got home. <laughs> So she supported me then. Yeah. I mean supported me with the salary and all the rest of it. And right throughout uh, my career, so thank you. And, and then uh, Lindsay and Jillian, I just say thanks for being who you are. And I guess family has always helped me to keep things in perspective. So that's a real critical part being an academic as well. So I'm going to wrap up by just saying 
I think that we do good things in this faculty. Like our whole faculty does good things, and it's been a privilege to make my contribution over the, the course of my career. So thanks very much.